We talked about data abstraction, and we talked about sequences, and lists in particular. Today we put those two things together. So what we're going to develop is our own data abstraction for a sequence. And this is a data structure that gets used all over in different programming languages and uh, different applications in computer science. So it's something you should know in general, but it's also a very nice illustration of some of the ideas we've encountered so far. So the linked list data abstraction looks like this. We have a constructor function, which takes in the first element of some sequence. And then as a second argument, it takes in the rest of the sequence. So construct a linked list from its first element and the rest. And then we have two selectors, which get at the information in the linked list. First returns the first element of the linked list, and rest returns the rest of the elements as a linked list. So what's going on here? Well, we have some representation of a sequence. That's just the first thing in the sequence and the rest. So how do you get the second thing? Well, that would be the first thing in the rest of the sequence. And so you can access any element you want just by looking at the rest or first of different parts. Here are the behavior conditions that must be satisfied by the constructor and selectors in order to have a valid representation of this data abstraction. If a linked list is constructed from some first element A and a linked list B, then first S returns A and rest S returns B. So it's very similar to a pair. The only thing that's really different is that we're calling the first element an element of a sequence. And we have this restriction that says B, the second thing, has to be a linked list itself. And it's so similar to a pair that we can implement it using two element lists or pairs. So let's say I want to represent, using my data abstraction of a linked list, the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4. The structure of the linked list looks like this. A linked list is a pair. So we have a two element list here where the element at index 0 of this pair is the first thing in the sequence. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is the sequence, and it begins with 1. And the second is a structure, and that structure contains all of the other elements of the sequence, or the rest of the linked list, 2, 3, and 4. Now it contains it in a structure that looks the same as the whole thing, meaning that each part is a pair, and a pair contains one element of the sequence and then the rest of the sequence. So the one indexed element here, the element at index one we see, is the rest of the linked list. And it goes on from one to two to three to four, and then eventually we see a special linked list called empty. And for that, we're just gonna represent it using the empty string. Now this data structure has many names. It's often called a linked list, some programming languages just call it a list because it's that important, or a forward list because we have arrows pointing forward. The reason it has many names is that it's fundamental to computing and gets used a lot. It gets used in very low-level applications like operating systems, and it gets used as a data structure in lots of recursive programs. Okay, let's look at a demonstration. So I'll start up Python with a file that contains the link constructor. And link doesn't take one, two. So it doesn't work like an arbitrary pair. Because the rest must also be a linked list. So I could link one and empty together. That's OK. And I could link one to what I get when I link two and empty together. And that gives me a linked list structure as well. Now once I have this, I can give it a name. And I can get the first element. So the sequence is 1, 2, first element is 1, the rest is 2, and then followed by nothing else. So if I want to get that 2, I could ask for the first element of the rest of s, and that would give me the number 2. So here's the code that actually implements the constructors and selectors 
and then another function that tests whether something is a linked list or not. So we can just glance through this. Um, S can be empty, then it's a linked list, or it has to be a list with two elements exactly, and the element at index one has to be a linked list as well. So this is a recursive definition, is link is defined in terms of is link, and that's how to test if something's a linked list. So you can build a linked list just by passing in the first and the rest, and it creates a pair, but first checks to make sure that the rest is a linked list. And first grabs the element at index zero, and rest grabs the element at index one. So here are some examples of linked list. We have four, which is just linking one, two, three, and four together. So there's four. We have march, which goes one, two, one, two. Looks like that. And then we have both, which is what you get when you link march and four together in a sequence. And you know, even if this didn't run onto a second line, it would be hard to read. But conceptually, this is a linked list containing two elements, and the first one is a linked list march, and the second one is the linked list four. So here's a discussion question. Which of these three evaluates to the number three? Which, by the way, is somewhere up here. Try to pick one of these expressions. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. Well, let's figure it out. We want to get this three right here. And we know that both is a linked list that starts with March and then has four. So if we want to get this three, which is part of the linked list named four, we're going to have to get the rest of this list, then get the first element of that. So let's start out by doing that. We'll get the rest of both. Then we'll get the first element of that. OK, now we have an expression that gives us the linked list four. See, it's the same as four. At which point, we need to select the three out of that. Well, in order to do so, we need to get the rest of the rest of that. So the rest of the rest gives us three and four, and then nothing after that. The first element of that sequence is the number three, which I believe is this. 